Hi there, this is Barb Binder with Rocky Mountain Training. I'm an Adobe Certified Instructor on FrameMaker and this video I'm going to use to introduce the concept of master pages in Adobe FrameMaker 11. FrameMaker documents contain several different types of pages. The pages where most of us begin working are the body pages. And as I scroll through this document, I'm showing you body page 1, here comes body pages 2 and 3, and here comes 4 and 5. That's where we spend most of our time in FrameMaker. But if you want to put in headers or footers, you put those in on the master pages because anything you add to a master page will show up immediately on the body pages. As I look at my margin area between pages uh, 2, 3, 4, and 5, I don't see any headers or footers. I want to add in page numbers first in the outside corners, the top of my pages. And to do that, I need to go to the master pages. So I'll choose View Menu master pages and when I arrive there what you see are two pages, two empty pages basically. Each of the two pages has three frames. It, both of them have a header frame and a footer frame which is where you put your headers and your footers. They're called background frames and in between you'll see a big template frame which is where the text actually goes on the body pages. So right page has the same thing, header frame and footer frame, those are called background frames. This is the template frame. I want to put page numbers in first, so I'm going to click in my right page header frame. And because I want the page numbers to be on the outside, I'm going to press the tab key on the keyboard two times. Tab, tab. My cursor jumps to the right side. And if I were to type in a page number like a 1, I would get a 1 on every single right hand page on page 1 and on page 3 and on page 5. That's a bad idea. A better choice would be to use a system variable. So I'm going to go to the format menu and I'm going to come down to headers and footers. The three most popular choices are pulled out into this menu for your convenience. Most popular option, insert page number. I'm going to do it. When I click on insert page number, I'm inserting the page number variable at the cursor location. I know it's tiny, so I'm going to zoom in so you can see what it looks like. It's actually a hashtag. Looks like uh, someone pressed shift 3, but I didn't. I used the system variable. And that's going to become a 1 on page 1, a 3 on page 3, a 5 on page 5, etc. I want one on the opposite page, so I'm going to click in the left page header frame and do the exact same thing. Format page layout. Sorry, I had a moment. Format, headers and footers, insert page number. There we go. Now if you want to change the formatting of the numbers, a presentation, you can certainly do so. That's going to be in the paragraph designer like any other paragraph. I might make the page numbers a little bit bigger just because I can. And I'll change the color to use a color I'm using elsewhere in the document. Perhaps emphasis color. I'm going to pick update all. And when I return to my body pages, I've got my page numbers in the outside of all the pages, which is great. But I also want to put a footer on these pages. And the footer text I'm looking for is the text that we see up in this area. I actually want to say chapter 1, colon, space, planning for commercial printing. Now, if I don't anticipate anything changing, which I always do because things always change, but if I didn't anticipate things changing, I could just go to my master pages and type that data in there. Or even better, I can copy and paste it. But a better way to go is to anticipate changes so that you stay on track throughout your layout. And you can put in a system variable that will actually collect this information and put it in the footer. The trick to this working, though, is knowing what paragraph tag is in charge of that particular paragraph. In my status bar, I'm showing you that that's a chapter title. And note the spelling. Once I have that head spelling in my head, I'm going to go to the View menu, down to the Master Pages. I'm going to click in my right page footer. I'm going to tab over to the right side of that frame. And I'm going to return to Format Menu, Headers and Footers. And as I look at the top three choices, it's none of the above. What I want is something else, so I'm going to have to click on Insert Other. And I'm going to find very quickly that the insert other is just a back door to open up the variables pod, which is waiting for me in the bottom of my screen. I'll click insert other. Here it comes. This is a variables pod. 
And the next thing I'm going to do is scroll down, looking through the system variables for the running header footer variables. There are 12 of them, which is more than I've ever needed in production. Oops, I've already gone past a couple of them. The one I'm looking for is the running header footer one. That's the name of the variable. This is the current definition. It says less than dollar sign paratext chapter title. And that happens to work for my document. What this means in English is, OK, FrameMaker, go get the paragraph text of the tag called chapter title. That's what I'm using. That's great. If it wasn't exactly the tag name I was using, I would click the Edit button right here, and I could modify the name so that it would match. But it does, so I'll go ahead and just double click it. There's my running header footer variable. I'm now going to copy it to the clipboard, come over and paste it, and then go check out my body pages and see how it looks. I'm going to go back to my view menu, body pages, and I'll go scrolling down. And sure enough, it has my chapter title now in my footers. But that's not exactly what I wanted. I didn't just want the chapter title. I also wanted the paragraph number in front of it. I don't have it because I didn't actually ask for it. So to be able to add that now, I'm going to return to my master pages one more time. I'm going to go find one of my footers. Just for fun, I'm going to collapse my variables pod. Because another quick way to get in there is to double click an existing variable. If I double click on running header footer one, click click, it opens back up again. I'm then going to edit the definition. Now, if the default tag name doesn't match your tag name, I was mentioning earlier, you can change the definition here. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to click in front of that and I'm going to add a new building block. The one I want to use is going to go get the paragraph number of a specific paragraph tag. And while my cursor is sitting there, I'm going to go ahead and add a space. I want to get the paragraph number of the tag called chapter title, but this one's giving me just a placeholder, so I'm going to have to type in chapter title. Very important you spell it exactly the same way as it is in the paragraph catalog. Any minor change, different case, a space, whatever, it's not going to work. But this will. So I'm going to pick Edit. I'm going to close my panel. I'm going to double click on the variables to collapse my pod. Looks the same here. Maybe I'll change the color before I go. I'll just change my color so that it's going to be emphasis color. Make it a little bit bigger so you have a better chance of reading it. And that's done. I'm going to go back to my body pages. And sure enough, there's my footer, Chapter 1, Planning for Commercial Printing. Way too big. Don't like where it is. But that's the concept behind it. And um, it's on every single page. If I start to scroll through, you can see what it looks like. Most important thing, let's say that I think I'm done. I'm ready to go home for the day. And I get a call saying, oh, didn't I tell you that chapter should be planning for color printing? I'm thinking, no, you didn't mention it. But it doesn't matter. I still have to make the change. I make a change, and as soon as I either zoom in, zoom out, change pages, or just refresh, that's going to update. And I'm going to go ahead and use Window Menu Refresh. It's a quick way to refresh without having to scroll. Automatically rereads the information on the, the document, and it updates the footer on every single page. You can't beat that.